What's going on, everybody? This is James Grandmaster Facts Boys, and you're here for another episode of the Facts Project. Today, special guest, brand new guest, first time on the program, Leslie Julian. Thank you for being here, sir. We're here to talk Savage Wizard. Yeah, what up? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I, and I do love the They Live <laughs> round you got going on back there. Appreciate man. it, man. One of my favorite movies. Yeah, I only so, just recently saw it, and it still holds up, sadly. Oh, man, man it's, it absolutely it's a great still movie. holds up. As a matter of fact, I think Keith David and Rowdy Piper had one of the longest fight scenes without any type of weapons known to man in, in yeah, a movie. It's wild. It's, it's probably a like, great scene, man. Yeah, it's like 15 minutes. Good yeah, Lord. It, it takes a minute for them to get through it, man. Every time you think they're done, nope, someone gets nope. right back up. Somebody <laughs> probably get kicked in the nuts, and then yeah, the fight the continues from there. <laughs> <laughs> so in talking about Savage Wizard, the inspiration behind this, I, I read, um, of course, came from you uh, doing a lot of comic writing beforehand, mm -hmm. but then also, in essence, joining a lot of Discord groups. Now, did it build from there? You just aligned with some people and you was like, yo, I think it would be a fun idea to just like align yourself because this is co-written by Doug Wood. Mm -hmm. And like, where did this all start from? Yeah, uh, kind of what you said in the beginning, uh, I had an idea pretty much or something called a uh, pitch vember where you're supposed to like come up with a quick little pitch uh, for a comic or I guess whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of be a, like a one off uh, starting pad uh, for for ideas. So this is actually something I came up with, like basically what if Conan Barbarian had to reclass as a wizard. And it kind of sat in my Google notes, like a lot of my comic ideas kind of sit. But um, Doug had hit me up and said, hey, you want to collab on something? And I was like, OK, because uh, I like uh, the stuff Doug was doing. And um, uh, Doug Wood, who has uh, published uh, Project Bitpipe, uh, he's done, uh, my mind's blank right now, but he's done some some great stuff. Yeah, uh, among, among the Bitcoin. Stars anthology was the first time I heard of him. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's definitely uh, uh, a great positive dude in the indie scene. Uh, and he's uh, definitely uh, helped me uh, with this project and some other stuff. Yeah, but basically he's like one to collab and I was like, sure. And we were going back and forth ideas and nothing was really clicking. Uh, and I, I just pulled that one out, like, hey, what do you think about this? And he's like, yo, that, that's the one. We got to do something with this. And we kind of built it up from there, pretty much. Definitely. Now, when we're talking about the, uh, or no, the title, Savage yeah. Wizard, mm -hmm. uh, you decide to go the route of Barbarians. Now, yeah. am I going to say that now everybody, of course, is going to be derivative to say that you watch some Conan or maybe mm -hmm. some, some Scorpion King. Yeah. Where did this more so derive from? Um, I mean, yeah, it's basically just like the general idea of Conan, pretty much. I uh, Once I kind of had that base idea, I just like kind of mashed those two things. Like he's a barbarian or he's a savage and the wizard. I was like, yo, that's a dope title. I, I got to do something with that. So it's more so, yeah, just like that generic uh, trope of the barbarian and obviously some Conan sprinkle as well. But um, obviously me and Doug would try to do our own thing with the, the characters in the world that we, we made. Yeah, and and the, the artwork from issue one, and I know that there's a different artist from issue one and the issue two, mm -hmm. but the the artwork in there is fantastic. Now, you decided to go black and white totally throughout issue one. Is that in? Is that also going to be in continuance in issue two? Yeah, we want to keep that going. Um, the the book kind of has like a, a manga inspired feel, so I think it really lends itself yeah. to that black and white feel for sure. Yeah, it's like uh, the, and and the little little notes of grayscale every yeah, now and again, exactly and like that um so to, to going into the story now if i if i'm saying the names correctly please mm -hmm. correct me uh renar yep that's how i say and it. renar and scam uh mm -hmm. so they are part of the same clan and all in all in essence they're they're friends in all yeah. that and they've more so looked at themselves as conquering multitudes of clans in order to gain dominance till one day Mm -hmm. somebody decided to fuck around a little too much. Yeah, yeah. right. And and Arnar just, you know, I'm sorry, Renar uh, just happens to go into a one-on-one -on -one battle and ultimately gets mistaken for reaching for somebody's sword and gets his hand chopped off. Yeah. Like in page four. Yeah, page uh, so this starts early. early. Yeah, we didn't want to mess around. We didn't want to waste time, so we got right into it. Yeah, pretty much like you said, there's that um relationship where Renar and Scom, like they're 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 homeboys, like they came up together, but mm -hmm. the Scom's kind of more on that jealous side where like he's always like, even though they're they're running together, like he has always kind of felt some type of way about being number two, you know? Right. And so like it's like, yes, it was an accident, but at the same time, it's like it's kind of like his his moment to, yeah. to kind of leapfrog uh Renar basically uh once he uh chops that hand off. 
Yeah. And it's not like he's like some goofy sidekick. Like he, no. of course, no, he's somebody. competent. He's capable for sure. Like they, 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 these are two, you know, alphas dominating right. for the leadership in the, in the clan. It just so happens that Renar just happens to be on top of the food chain right now. Yeah. And so much so that, you know, at that moment in time, before he does get his hand chopped off, you see him as somewhat arrogant. Yeah, and for sure. Somewhat, uh, uh, I, I guess one dimensional and how he's running it. I'm, I, I'm me. I'm going to run it. I'm going to take out the top dog as, as far as all the clans. And, and basically by the end of it, he's like, man, you wish he was as good as me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But also more so often than not, the, the symbolization of him getting dismembered mm -hmm. because the barbarians see it as a sign of weakness. Mm hmm so the the assumption is there that yes. all of a sudden because he has no hand mm -hmm. that he is weak. Now that of course becomes the basis of this entire story. So when you're describing a character who at one point was at its at the, his highest of high, right, and then all of a sudden amongst the people who are around him, because he was top dog. One simple miscue, the removing of his hand, he is no longer capable of doing anything. Leave him out here in the desert. He can just die, to, die tomorrow. How do you build up a story and a personality change uh, going from somebody who is all powerful to somebody at the lowest of the lows? How do you build that up in the story? A great question um that's you know like the, the catalyst for um our main character renar having to to change pretty much like like you said he he's the top dog he still sees himself on top he's almost like unstoppable like in his uh original form you would say well you know with two hands but he basically has to pivot like, like we all kind of have to pivot in life like he, yeah things change on him real quick and um he you know he he's walling for a bit like you know he doesn't know what to do and he gets a, a swift kick in the ass and a, a rude awakening in terms of like, you can't just sit here and complain about how things used to be. Like you need to figure things out uh, real right. quick uh, from Akora, who uh, is intricate just a little bit later, like you said, after he's left uh, dying. Yeah, and it's almost like right away. It's not mm -hmm. like I'm going to sit here and sit in my sorrows for the kind of, kind of like how Conan did in, in, in Conan the Barbarian, just sit through... Mm -hmm. uh, almost like a year of drinking. Yeah, you don't uh, got time for that. Being disheveled or anything like that. When he runs into a Cora, like she's almost like, eh, okay, there's some one-handed barbarian out here. Get out of the way real quick. You know, like like she's almost treating him like like he's not there. But the thing is, I gotta realize it, she's she always has this perception of her vision and mm -hmm. what she saw as far as what is an imposing threat that's going to continue on in this book. But then, of course, Renard, having somewhat of a, I guess, an intuition about some of the things that might be happening out there, she feels like she needs them. But all in the beginning, she feels like she don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, and I would say it, it's kind of funny. Uh, just like you said, uh, Renard's clan kind of has this idea of like, oh, like you don't have a hand, like you're useless. Uh, for her, also, it's like you're a barbarian, like. Yeah, I don't deal like, with barbarians. Right, like I, I don't mess with that. And, and same for him. So you have a very interesting, like odd couple, these people that really don't want to work together, but they kind of sort of have to, and they're kind of trying to navigate this very tenuous relationship that they got going on because she thinks like, okay, maybe this guy might have some minor use, but really if I if I didn't have to have him around, I'd definitely kick him to the curb, you know? Yeah, and it all and, and it's almost like... uh almost like a classes uh, classes type of thing because oh, for sure, for barbarians sure. seeing yep. witches as an underclass and the witches see barbarians as an underclass. They see them as they see witches as not being strong and witches seeing barbarians as being dumb. Yeah. You got that on the head right there. And I, I feel like I try to tackle that a lot in the book, like those kind of misperceptions and just like, kind of, like you said, like having that narrow mindedness for sure is like something that like, both these characters kind of go on that journey of like widening the, their worlds for sure. For sure. Now, also in essence, because of a core's vision, there's this impeding threat and inevitably scum has to have some type of warning. But the thing is they're almost at the point where 
Renar can't even be taken seriously. Like, even if he was going to come up with a warning, it was like, bro, we, we're not listening to you. Yeah. It, you, you're finished. Like, just <laughs> just stay out here in the de desert. Like, you really think we're going to listen to you after everything that's good? Like, they won't even listen to reason from a one-armed, one-handed man. No, but they're, they're definitely past reason there. They're looking for pretty much any excuse to just keep doing what they're doing. And, I mean, yeah, listen to him. That, that's not an option they're they're like okay we're on top now so we we can pretty much write the rules into what we want right and Akora is no ordinary witch she's a necromancer yes. so almost in a sense like what has to happen in 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 order for her so the it, what what is the more so i guess um ascending point to where it's like hey i'm just going to teach you magic is it because of the vision? So it, it's basically the necessity. Uh, we we can kind of do some light spoilers, but pretty much they can't hack it. The two of them together, like, you know, you got Renard, who is, is newly handicapped. He, he can't swing a sword anymore because like, he lost his sword hand. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he, he's riding, he, he lost his right hand. And Okora, you know, she's one person against basically like an entire army. So she realizes like the two of us together, like, you know, we can't hack it. Like I need you to level up basically. Cause like he, yeah. he cannot fight. So it's like the only way for you to be able to be in the mix, like you're going to have to learn magic. So that's, that's the, uh, the move to push him to becoming that, that quote unquote savage wizard is like, Oh, like yeah. I need you to be able to do something. And, and I like the fact that they're both stereotypical towards each other, mm -hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> almost in a, a comical way. It's like, of course you don't know. You know, like uh, that that's how she's like referring to him as is as, as just being this lesser uh lesser being and and even him in a sense, because yeah. even though he's following along with her throughout this entire journey, she's just like, I don't know if it's gonna cut it, but I'm gonna try, yeah now, yeah. sorry, go ahead no no in the in the long run the the warning to to scam is of an impending threat. Now, inevitably from this book going into from one into two, um, that that warning is going to actually come to a come to a head because they're going to see him rolling with a witch as they did in, in issue one and was like, yo, you now you're trading on us. You you have no hand. And now you you're you're with a witch. It's like, is this your way of just like maintaining yourself in the world? Yeah, for them, like that's that's some real low stuff right there to be rolling with the witch. And so like that, uh, I mean, like they already left him for dead. Like at this point, it's like we don't care what you say. Like, I mean, you're you're dead to us pretty much. Like, uh, even though like they're the aggressors, so it's it's a very interesting dynamic where mm -hmm. uh, they keep doing wrong, but like uh uh Renard even yeah, teaming up with the core is like, oh no, like that's that's taboo. Yeah. And and also even in the long scale of things, you're you're looking at the 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 I guess the villain in all of this, mm -hmm. and he's it, it, he's not even mentioned by name. All all you see at the end of the comic is it's him. So yeah. does that come more into into light in the second issue? Oh yeah, like uh, I I feel like it's it's a little murky in number one, but by number two, like you know for sure, like uh, who it is. Like uh, I, I there's a little bit misdirection, but I I think like yeah, basically by issue two, real quick, like you understand like the stakes and exactly who M is. Like uh, it becomes uh, clear. Like like uh, number two picks up right after uh, the first issue, like right, right. After, like. Yep. Now now as far as. Renar, as this character that you that you basically built as being a barbarian, how are you writing somebody that's very simple minded, mm -hmm. and taking a long time to teach, yeah. and is just more so a uh, more so a comedy angle a, within that first issue uh, towards the end, and maybe even in the beginning of issue two, mm -hmm. and it's like, and like it's almost like how do we start to take this character seriously? And when do we start to see him build? When does the switch, if he's going, if there is a pivot, mm -hmm. how does it happen? That's a great question. So like he's pretty much put on 
crash course. There isn't a lot of time for him to build himself up to be the best of the best. Like he has to be able to do something. So like he is like, okay, starting at level one and hopefully by, you know, the next time he encounters, uh, you know, the, the opposition, like he'll at least be at level two. So, um, there's still like a lot of comedy. I I think I really like, uh, the comedy aspect of this also like there's a lot of action but like you know it, it's a light-hearted book as well uh in terms of yeah like renard being uh uh the dumbass <laughs> pretty much and just like a lot of uh, uh physical humor as well but um i think we allow even though he like said kind of simple like some growth and also uh you see like a little bit more of his personality also like some things like he wouldn't expect and, and number two like uh, pretty early on and they're silly, but like they give them a little bit more depth. I feel like, like, huh? Mm. Like, okay, that, that's interesting. So now that Scom mm-hmm. has ruling control of this clan, yeah. How does his, I guess, ascension mm-hmm. and uh, his now, I guess, uh, his role as the leader of this clan? How does that start to build? Because he does he come to realize that Renard controlling this clan was probably like the right idea and he he kind of looks like he's in over his head or does scam kind of like figure it out going into issue two so with issue two he pretty much runs with his idea um and issue one you kind of see uh like a flashback sequence of uh a little bit like how or why scam feels the way he, he feels about um people outside of clan so pretty much world is kind of separated between the barbarians uh people you call no swords like regular folk and then like mm-hmm. you know uh uh people that do magic whatnot and so uh for scum like he is you know very much uh anti no sword anti you know regular folk and he's on a mission to pretty much turn uh society upside down so like from day one like after he takes over clan like he's trying to put that into action mm. now is the inevitability that Renard is almost dealing with like two situations at once? Cause he's for one, it's like Scom has control of an, uh, of an almost uncontrollable clan at this point. Mm-hmm. And then also um, in, in combination with him pairing up with the witch uh, with Akora, Now he still has to warn him. How does that work? Um, so, uh, I feel like, uh, they have a very, I guess, narrow mind in terms of, uh, the actions they're taking. So like, yeah, maybe they could try to, uh, reach out and say like, yo, everyone, like something big and bad is coming. Uh, but I think they have such a tunnel vision at the moment that they're like, we're just going to keep chasing that, that big bad, that ghost. And like, we're going to handle ourselves. But like mm. you said, like, or as you said, like, uh, maybe you could just be warning people, but no, like they're kind of at that main character mindset. Like, oh, we're, we're just going to try to handle it ourselves because we got this and is it don't got it <laughs> yeah is it out of the question that renard could even rejoin his clan at this point uh, at this point for sure uh it's oh. uh unfortunately <laughs> for him it's just like this unwritten or maybe a written rule that like you know you can't wield a sword then yeah you're just not one of us so it's almost like he's a it, well not even in that type of aspect i was looking at the fact that maybe he would have to impress him by the fact that he's He's now conquered on the the will of working into his his magical role. Yeah, but and for them that's that's not impressive at all. <laughs> the, yeah, they're like, no, you can do magic. Yeah, what, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But inevitably, I mean, um, maybe also in the end of this, you're looking at the fact that Akora has this is this is her journey as well. I got oh, for sure. Gotta, yes, it's the both of them. Yeah, it's like I've been sitting here on my own. I've learned magic. I'm pretty much uh, have 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 no magic my entire life and now i'm sitting here and i gotta teach of all people yeah barbarian right so that's my journey i gotta be a teacher yeah now now going into issue two what little tidbits um do do we do we feel like it's going to shine a little bit more in this book so yeah issue one obviously teases the magic but you know issue two we get right into uh Okar teaching Renard magic. So you get like, you know, a training montage of them working together. And again, like that's kind of where you see some more of uh, Renard's uh, personality, uh, quirks and traits. Um, and then uh, I, I try to get into action not, not too much longer after that. So you kind of see what uh, SCOM has been up to in a, a fairly short amount of time. And uh, things kind of uh, build to a head uh, towards the end. 
that now the 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 creative team that you now have because mm-hmm. the action sequences that we saw in issue one were phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, Brian uh, was amazing. Yeah, so like as far as the creative team for for issue two, it, it, if if you have a chance, like shout mm-hmm. every, shout everybody out. Yeah, for sure. So I got Tobin Rasikot coming back on letters. He's a fantastic letterer. You know, you always know when someone's good because you don't notice letters if mm-hmm. someone's doing a good job. And uh, Nero Crane uh, is an uh, artist who's going to be considering a series. He's uh, fantastic. Uh, it's different, but uh, at the same time, he still picks up a lot of that uh, that energy in terms of action and the humor as well. He is a master of the black and white, and I think uh, people are really going to enjoy his work for sure. Absolutely. Now, um, as far as like uh, the reasoning mm-hmm. that you felt as though um, – you you wanted to keep this almost in a manga sense and keep it within black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you feel like is more design interpreted when it is in black and white as opposed to having it in color? Um, so I think uh, sometimes I think, yeah, that not always, obviously, because it is different with books, but um, I think I'll, there's a lot of small things like in the details that you can pick up a little bit easier in, in the black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian, you saw was freaking nuts with with the details and stuff and uh narrow crane also has been putting some really fun stuff in the background and i think uh just the fact that uh in the black and white there there's something to i don't know like i don't know if it's like a just another level of gravitas or something but there's just like a whole different energy like in, in the black and white versus um color so i i just really yeah appreciate how um the black and white looks and it's just like something that you don't see as much and I, I appreciate it. so I just want to keep that going with number two and the uh, continue uh, series as it continues for sure for sure and I, I to be honest I think it's a good move because there's an aesthetic of course mm-hmm. with a lot of indie con uh, indie comics that you know not one or two are the same right and everybody pretty much like has their niche and they'll continue to do so if it, if it builds an audience and especially with the with the looks of the first one I mean, I can only imagine. Now, you put this out, like, what, early 2023 last year? Yes, it got printed uh, early last year, yep. And how was the reception for issue one? Uh, I got positive feedback from uh, everyone that read it. People love, you know, the the art, especially, like, you know, like I said, just Brian's freaking master with the stuff he's doing. And people are like, oh, when's number two coming out? When's number two coming out? So you're always happy to hear that when people want to see the follow-up. So definitely very glad to be running the Kickstarter right now. We're about 60% funded. So it's looking like this thing is definitely be coming to fruition pretty soon. Absolutely. And I think I saw a picture of you at a Comic-Con with Travis Hill. Yeah, that was a staple with Travis. I know him online for a minute, but I finally got to meet him in person, which that was dope. That's excellent. That's excellent. Now, as far as um, inspirations for the book, mm-hmm. and it's, and it's um, even just in indie comics, like who are some big maybe writers, creators, artists that you've been following since you started your journey back in 2020? Uh, I mean, for me, uh, I would say generic ones. And it, it, it's funny you say the black and white, but uh, I'm a big Ninja Trolls person. So like he's been layered for sure. The black and white inspirations right there. Uh, they're just in my comics DNA. They're definitely the reason why I'm making comics right now. Um, always been a big uh, Brian K. Vaughn fan. Um, and I really like what uh, David Post is doing. He's been uh, doing you know, Savage oh, yeah, doing, and whatnot. Doing Space Ghost right now, too. Yep, Space Ghost. Yeah, that's looking yeah, fun. Okay. That's looking real good. I saw that. I was like, what? Yeah, I know, right? Like, where did this come from? Okay, oh, that's like, out of left field. Uh, yeah. like, nobody did a Space, space Ghost co- comic in forever. Nah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I, I really like a lot of his work. Um, in terms of art, um, uh, uh, Brian, I think, was a big uh, Berserker fan. He is really into Brian. Uh, Sorry, not Brian, uh, Daniel Warren Johnson's art. Um, so oh, yeah. a little of that DNA is uh, being continued. But uh, Nero Crane is just like a big uh, like a manga head in general. So I think, like I said, you get that yeah. um, aesthetic for sure. So yeah, uh, there's all over the place for us, I feel like. Yeah, I find it the, the what you what what you were able to accomplish um, as far as art wise in your first book mm-hmm. reminds me of the filling of the page that Daniel Warren Johnson does. Like as far as just like when if I'm looking to do a power bomb, I can look at any corner of the book yeah. and there's something happening. There might even be like a splatter of blood like way up here at the top yeah. of the page, and it's just like they like this dude didn't waste a ounce of paper. Mm-hmm. 
No. Which I always thought was like, like dope. Like he didn't keep anything within the box or anything. I'm just gonna, I'm yeah, just I'm spread gonna exactly. Flash all this out. Yeah. Hey. The box is just a suggestion. You can, yeah, exactly. I love when people kind of expand the limits of the page and do wild stuff like that. Which, uh, yeah, I, I think we're continuing to do it. Number two as well. Definitely. Now, when we're talking about like uh, Sa is Savage Wizard, mm -hmm. of course, being your 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 first title uh, being being put out, and of course you you're now into your second issue. Um, how far could this go? So I have an arc plan for uh, basically at uh, this mini series. Uh, so like that will finish the story and I could see it uh, going past that. I do already have like the inkling of like uh, what could happen. Like once this um, first run is done um, past that, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't uh, want to think too far past that, but I mean, I think I can at least see like, you know, 12 issues or so I'm, I'm working on like the final issue, uh, which is a uh, number five right now. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I would definitely love to continue it a little bit past that, but at the very least, you know, finish these five issues and put a trade together and then we'll see if yeah, people want uh, me to continue the story past that. Nice. Now, as far as this particular genre, mm -hmm. uh, we have, it's almost fantasy action. Yeah. Almost in that sense. Is there any particular genre that maybe you haven't touched yet that you would like to put your hands in? Um, yeah, there, there's a few. I have a, a horror uh, thing I'm working on right now, actually. Um, it's all scripted. Um, the artist is trying to find some free time. It's uh, something we've been kind of collaborating on uh, for a bit, but just kind of had some mothballs. And I just recently got to revisit it. It's uh, called Lost Lake. It's about um, a group of women uh, are pretty much going like on a girl's trip. And it's kind of like a, I wouldn't call it like a deconstruction of like, slasher uh flicks but it's like it's got slasher wise but it's got a little bit more to it as well mm. uh, so yeah horror i mean i love horror but i've never i mean found, the background like, says it all yeah, i'm not true yeah, so like <laughs> right but i've never found the inspiration like to, to write something so I, I'm, I'm really excited about that one and um i also have another ongoing series head cases um with aj o mason which actually will hopefully be uh crowdfunding uh later this summer number two um, so that's a little bit of a, a thriller action uh, thing, a little bit different vibes is two kids in high school, they find a severed head in a bag that they stole, and there's hitman chasing them to get it back. So mm. I, I, I kind of bounce around a little bit. But I mean, um, sci fi, I think was definitely something I, I like to uh, go for in the future, since I've yeah, done a bit of action, um, the horror thing. So yeah, sci fi is probably something that'd be cool to ta tackle. Looking to jump into the space from? Are you just, yeah. just strictly aliens or anything like that? Or are you looking to like basically like do something that's a little bit more outside of the box? Um, uh, I would say uh, maybe not too far outside the box. I, I think uh, I have an idea for something that's uh, not too far from move from reality, but still set in space, like uh, a little bit into the future. Absolutely. Hey, look, man, that's phenomenal. I, I, I'll definitely it. be look, looking looking forward to it. So, I appreciate you joining me here. This, uh, the, if now uh, if I'm if I'm looking correctly, there is exactly two weeks left in the campaign. Yep, yep. All right. So, look, fourteen more days ago, uh, and issue two should be in our hands. When? Um, fingers crossed it should be this fall something October November most likely if uh, things uh, go as planned uh, if not I'll definitely keep people updated but I'm really hoping for a, a fall uh, uh, fulfillment absolutely so Leslie appreciate you joining me this was this was brilliant I appreciate how every well now everybody has pretty much gotten the know-how of how Savage Wizard is going to be running how the continuance of this series is actually a, a great uh great storyline and how this is building forth so i appreciate you joining me yeah thanks so much for having me i really appreciate it it's a lot of fun absolutely so for james grand mass effects boys leslie julian savage wizard two weeks left on kickstarter go out there and get that get that goal set so for everybody here at the facts project we are out